In the second segment that focuses on the summary lens of the No Child Left Behind Act, we're going to be talking about two additional focus areas. One is, is the focus on greater flexibility of the use of federal funds, and the second is a focus on the Reading First Initiative, or this focus on um, kindergarten through third grade reading. So to start with this increased flexibility piece, this particularly talks about flexibility of the use of federal funds, not the flexibility of running schools, which is, is sometimes a, a misconception about what this piece of legislation focuses on. So generally speaking, um, when we think about the reauthorization of, of this piece of legislation, the ESEA legislation, um, it, it, it tends to be the case that the authorizations that were authored by or, or put through by um, Republican presidents focused on reducing the or increasing the flexibility of the funds and that the Democratic presidents uh, tended to try to stipulate with more specificity where the federal funds would go. Um, and the No Child Left Behind Act uh, follows this pattern in the sense that what the piece of legislation promises is that if you can um, if states and localities can follow these regulations around increased accountability in terms of testing, um, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, t accountability for results, that in exchange you'll get greater flexibility in terms of the federal funding streams. For instance, um, some of the federal funding streams, such as the teacher quality state grants or educational technology or innovative programs, et cetera, if your state was able to demonstrate this kind of commitment to the accountability features um, and the quality features of the legislation, then the federal government would allow localities to collapse some of these funding sources into Title I to be used for less um, stringent purposes. And so for localities, the motivation was very high to participate in the accountability features of this. Um, in the respect that they really wanted to have this increased autonomy around how to use the different federal funding streams. And so in exchange for these more stringent accountability features, or excuse me, in exchange for these in increased flexibility of funds, the schools would then agree to enter into this more kind of performance agreement with the Secretary of Education. So the fourth kind of uh, foundational feature of this, we, we talked about the, the first two pieces in the, in the previous segment and then greater flexibility um, in this segment. The fourth feature focuses on something that NCLB called reading first. And what this was um, is a focus on early intervention in, in, in reading or in literacy. Um, and the focused target grades was kindergarten through third grade. Um, with what the legislation called scientifically based reading programs um, and trying to bring some kind of diagnostic evidence to bear, so diagnostic assessment of what children know on this kind of trajectory of learning to read, um, and then trying to implement that at scale in kinder kindergarten through third grade across these different localities. The idea behind Reading First was really the No Child Left Behind Act giving a set of um, grants to states, and then states making determinations about which localities these funds would be invested in, in terms of K through third grade literacy intervention. That will be the end of this segment, um, which kind of wraps up the summary lens. Um, and next, we're going to be moving into the analytical lens, um, in which we'll focus a little more deeply on both um, the waivers that have been granted under the current administration, Barack Obama's administration, and then also assessing what the No Child Left Behind Act has accomplished and what were the, some of the fundamental challenges or questions that it raises relative to federal intervention in public schooling.